Today I'm going to help you get your year started out right. And what we're going to do is what we're going to do is uh, talk about fixing problems that are unfixable. <laughs> Some of you, including me, we've done New Year's resolutions. And we've gone through the whole year, and we've made resolutions last year that we made the year before and the year before. Come on, y'all. You know what? This, and you're just like you're un, it's unfixable. You got family problems that are unfixable. You got maybe weight problems that seem to be unfixable. Or you got financial problems that seem to be unfixable. Maybe it's your job problems that's unfixable. Maybe you got marriage problems, and you've been trying to fix him since the day you married. He ain't done nothing yet. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible talks a lot about fixing problems problems that are unfixable and so if you want to have a breakout family if I'm telling you as a father as a mother you want to see your family come to greatness if you want to see your career go to the next level if you want to get closer this year to God than you've ever been in your life in a world that's pulling you away from God more than it ever has in your life if you want to see if you want to change your city if you want to solve massive problems, if you want to, fi if you want to fix things <laughs> this year through the power of God that you have not been able to fix yet in your family, in your personal life, in your finances, then you are going to have to this year do something different than you've done before, and that is learn how to be, one word, innovative. You're going to have to do some creative things to be innovative, to do some things you've never done in all the years of your life. And, and, and this message is to challenge you to do that. I encourage you this message to not forget this message. I encourage you for the first seven months of the listen to it with your family, with your spouse. If you're single, listen to it a bunch of times until you get this right. Work through this every month for the entire year. And so uh, I, I watched this leadership podcast from Craig Rochelle and he's talking about four essentials of innovation and it's really for leadership it's for leading people it's for church leadership or in your business making a difference and I saw this though in as many areas in my personal life and so I've, I've kind of shifted this around and I've applied these scriptures that God is talking about in the book of James to this and I, I'm bringing it to you as in a personal challenge for the year to help you make some changes. So, yes, this is related to <clears throat> church growth and leadership, but today I see it as being something that can take you and me to the next level with God. All right, so, so what is innovation? This fa big fancy word, what is innovation? Innovation is different than being creative this year, different than making New Year's uh, resolutions. Innovation is well let's say creativity is you coming up with new ideas well I'm going to go do this and I'm going to do that and, and you've got your dream and you want this, this this to happen this year you're being creative and trying to be a better father, better mother, better your business, your finances, your relationship with God, doing ministry serving God more, all these things and creativity is coming up with these ideas but innovation is actually doing the ideas you see the difference? Creativity is coming up with the ideas. Innovation is actually doing the ideas. So what do we know? Uh, if, if you are, if you, listen to me. Whoop, whoop. Y'all hear? All you guys that got a successful marriage, enjoy it while it is successful. Okay? All you guys making money right now, enjoy it because it's going to change. All you guys that your kids are under control, enjoy it. I promise you, it ain't going to last long. <laughs> oh, if you're enjoying success in your life and your Christian walk with the Lord, enjoy it because it is not going to last. And if we don't do things differently as things change, the reason I'm saying this is because Satan is attacking families and people and individuals and singles now today more than ever in the history of your life amen and in families and the world is changing around us we can't keep doing things the way we used to do them we've got to learn spiritually how to make change and be innovative 
If we're going to have a successful church, if you're going to have a, be a successful family, if you're going to be successful as an individual, then you're going to have to do things different today than maybe you've ever done before. And so this is the way I say it. Success today does not guarantee success for tomorrow. Do you see that? Success today, just because things are well today, does not guarantee success for tomorrow. And I got any leave it to beaver fans in the house. Come on, let me hear you. Am I that old? Come on, you folks. How many people like leave it to beaver? The 70s. How many of y'all know that families can't survive the way they used to do it and leave it to beaver? <laughs> Times have changed. We can't keep doing it that way. The demographics of the family has changed. Their most chaotic deal is when a girl smiled at a beaver or something like that. And his big brother's giving him advice on how to court the girl. Nowadays, things is a little bit different. Used to, you wanted to have to go get a dirty magazine. You had to go swallow up, and you had to go to a counter to buy one. Now, you get it whether you want it or not. And as a matter of fact, your kids get it, whether you want them to get it or not. Things have changed. We can't parent anymore the way we used to parent. Things have changed, and so we're going to have to change. There's four things that it takes for us to be innovative, and boy, I can really relate to these things. Four things. Number one, you need a problem to solve. We all got that but there's four things you got to have that, that help you break through and make some innovative decisions spiritually in your life. you got to have a problem to solve, plus you got to have limited resources. You can't have the money, the ability, the people around you help you fix it. Plus, you got to have a, a, a need to be willing, a willingness to fail. And that's a big deal. you got to be willing to try some things, even if you fail. There's got to be, you've got to have a willingness to fail. And the fourth thing you've got to have, if you're going to be innovative this year, is we need to have a crazy idea, a good idea, something you've never done before. It seems crazy to you. So, number one, we need a problem to solve. Number two, we need limited resources. You don't have the ability, the money, whatever it is to fix whatever it is that you're trying to fix. And you, we need, plus, a willingness to fail, plus we need a crazy idea. So, so each of these things, and if you can do, if you have all four of these things, like I do in many areas of my life, and this church, if you have all four of these things, it could equal explosive innovation in your life and change this year if you have all four of these things. So what do we need to do? to have a breakout year spiritually financially as a single in your marriage as a teenager in your family what do you need to do to have a breakout year uh, well number one you got to focus on the problem that you've got to solve focus on a problem to solve and so there's not a person in here that we don't have a problem to solve in James chapter 1 verses Starting in verse 2, I want you to look at this. And, and boy, I know where you're headed, Brother Todd. Well, let's just head there. It's the Word of God, okay? Turn to the book of James. Find that with me. This is something you need to focus on. And it's, it's not a fairly good scripture, and a lot of people don't like this scripture and don't agree with it. It doesn't make sense. That's, that's, that's what I'm here for. God has called me. He has anointed me to make complicated things in life. Simple, simple. And so I want to simple for you. Look at it, James chapter 1. Let's start in verse 2. He says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of every kind. So joy, it's like, okay, I, it's when you got problems. And the first response I have, and it just seems like, I go from the fir first grade as a Christian into the second grade, and I pass, I, I see it, have one level of problems here, but then as I get more mature, I got a different level of problems. I get closer to God. It's all, there's always in our lives a problem that just makes you go, oh, I wish 
that was not happening in my life, in my family, in my finances, in my personal, that temptation, that sin. Ah, it just knocks the wind out of you every time. So, so God is saying here, count it joy when you have problems. He said, I don't want to count it joy when you have problems, when I have health issues, when I, all these things. I, I, I No. And I'm telling you, having a problem God can use in your life. And so if you want to be innovative, again, we, number one, need a problem to solve. Why do we need a problem to solve? Look at verse 3. It says, if you, uh, it says, if you know, before you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. I want to explain this. Testing of your faith. You see a lot of things in life, maybe you think it's a testing of her or a testing of him or if she would act right or he would act right or if my kids would act right or if they wouldn't treat me this way at, the, at the, my job if I, or whatever it is. All these situations, all these tests, these struggles, these problems that you have on your plate in your life that you carried in this room with you today, every one of us, the Bible says it's good that you are being tested because why? The testing of your faith. Are you going to trust God to do this? Or are you going to try to do it all yourself? Instead, it said, if you will put your faith at the test, are you going to trust God to get you through? Okay? And if you do trust God to get you through, the scripture says then that you will get steadfast. And it's kind of weightlifter. If you know, if a, if a weightlifter just goes in there and takes 12 pounds and curls 12 pounds three times and leaves, he's not going to get any stronger. And if he curls 12 pounds every single day of his life, he's not going to get any stronger. And your tests are going to increase. If you're going to get stronger, if you're steadfast, it's going to be good that you've got so much weight on you from time to time that you can't curl it. This is a curl, by the way. You know, you grab a bar and you pull it up that way. You can't lift it. And it's good for you to not be able to do that. God's saying, count of joy when you meet those situations because there's going to be some, it's, if it's a test for you to help you grow. And look at verse 4. It says, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect. You see, God does not want you to be a failure. Now, failure may be part of you being perfect. Does that make sense? I'm going to get into that more here. But if you're going to be perfect, it's going to take some faith. It's going to take you coming to face some problems. You've got to have a problem to solve. And if you're going to be complete, if you're going to be lacking in nothing, and you're going to become the woman that God wants you to be, you are going to have to go through some tests to help you get there. And so some problems. And so we've we got number one, we need a problem to solve. Number two, we, we have got to to be able to come to the point where we, we move forward in that other scripture and we, we don't have the resources, we can't fix it, and that pressure, that's faith. Faith is a resource. And number three here is we need uh, the willingness to fail. you got to go into life as a Christian saying, I can't be perfect, but I'm going to try, and I am going to work, and I'm going to strive, and in whatever it takes, it's okay if I fail, I'm going to get up. Walter Payton, any football fans in here? He, he said, I, I was a football fan until they stopped standing up. <laughs> okay. Now I'm a college football fan. Walter Payton, 5,000. Uh, he averaged 5.5 rushing yards, I believe what it was, in, in, in carrying a football. And I heard him one time years ago talking about his records. Five point, every time, I'm talking about professional 300-pound gorillas trying to tackle you, planning all the guys to tackle the one guy, and he averaged in his life 5.5 yards a carry. And they said, amazing how he could accomplish that. And they said, but you know, the biggest thing of Walter Payton's success is not that he was able to carry the ball 5.5 yards every time he laid his hands on the ball is the fact that he got up X number of times, thousands of times. When everything's unleashed, that's how he was able to break and create those rushing yards. And so us being able to get up. So we need to be willing to fail. And sometimes you're not going to get the yardage in that test that you want. Sometimes you're going to get maybe more. And so here's, here's what Craig Rochelle said in, in that podcast that I was telling you about. He said, uh, every great innovation is simply a solution to a problem. Therefore, problems are not a thing to fear but an opportunity to embrace. Look at it again. Every great innovation, your ideas to press you out. You got to have these four things that be innovative. 
Every great innovation is simply a solution to a problem. Therefore, problems, the pressure in your life, are not things to fear and worry about, but they are opportunities to embrace. Great innovations are not things that will, will help us overcome these things if we pray for it. So what do you need to do? We need spiritually, through our faith, faith test, God to give us the ability to train our minds that when we have these problems, it is a joyful, it's a good thing. It's an opportunity exposed in our life to help us get better. To help us get better. So what do we need? Number one, we need a problem to solve. We gotta have, can't have resources to fix it. And you just say, no, you're saying that wrong, Todd. You, you're, you're backwards. We need more resources to fix it. No, no, no. If you're going to be really innovative, I'm, I'm saying, I submit to you, no, you don't, you can't fix it. You can't fix it with money. That's the biggest cop out I think I hear in the Christian walk today. That's why many people are still not serving God and not moving. They, they cop out, they says, I can't do it. I don't have something. It's a cop out. I can't be innovative this next year because I don't have the time or I don't have the money to make a difference or I don't have this or my family can't do that. I can't do that. It's a cop out saying I can't do something for God because I don't have and you fill in the blank. And so we, they say I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have what I need. I don't have the ability. I, I can't do these things. And so, you know, I don't have that. And just fill in the blank. I don't have the ideas. I don't have the people around me. I don't have the help around me. I don't have the right friends to support me. I, I, and I, I need more money to be able to do that for my company to go to the next level. I need more money to be able, I need more money to be able to tithe. I need more money. Whatever the problem is, you're saying I need more to be innovative. That's a cop out. No, you need less for you to have so many, so much pressure in your life that you break out and begin to make some changes that you've never been able to do before. So it's a good thing that you don't have the resources to do that. If you, uh, if you believe that you can always do it if you have more, and if you think you're not going to do any more for God because you don't have more, you know what you're going to prove? You're going to prove that you're right. If you're not going to do anything for God, if you're not going to go to the next level as a husband, as a wife, as a teenager, if you're not going to go to the next level because you don't have more, you're going to prove yourself. You are not going to go there because you're going to sit there. And you know, more is not always better. You say, if you, if you had more time, too much time can make you lazy. You say, if I had more money, I'm telling you, more money don't fix your marriage problems. Buying a bigger house, giving her a car for Christmas, taking them to th walk Disneyland or whatever. Money is not going to fix your marriage. As a matter of fact, all you need is to be innovative and to get on your face in a faith test and you be innovative to give your, to, to love your wife like Christ loved the church and gave himself. Oh, that's, you got to be that kind of innovative in scripture. If you're going to save your marriage, money is not going to fix it. If you're losing your kids, buying them a bigger Christmas present or a 270 uh, with a, a Nikon 3 by 4, a 3 by, three by 9 by 40 scope, it's not going to fix your relationship. It's not going to help them giving them a bigger game to play or whatever. That's not going to fix your relationship between your children. You're going to be innovative. You've got to be innovative. You've got to figure out what you've got to do to reconnect on their level with them, their children. Money, more. Sometimes having more is bad. And so I'm saying, it's okay. It's good that you don't have the finances, the resources. It's a good thing. That's a count of joy. God's going to let me be innovative. He's going to let me see some things here I need to do. Are y'all with me this morning? This, this is a weird, crazy message. Y'all just stay with me, you know. You, you, want, a, you want a spoon fed, not weird, crazy guy? You're at the wrong place. But you want a weird, crazy preacher? I'm going to give you some weird, crazy stuff. It's weird, crazy stuff. So come on. So what do we need to do? You got you to gotta have some problems. You got to have be sitting in a situation where you can't fix it. No resources. And number three, here's the big one. Y'all, can y'all read? 
I can't read very good. I really can't. <laughs> a willingness to fail. You need a willingness to fail. So failure is a huge part um, of being able to be innovative, accepting the fact that you're not always going to win. It's not always going to go perfect. You're going to fail. You're going to fall. So some people say, well, for us and our family, failure's not an option. <laughs> that attitude will get you divorced in about six months. That attitude will drive your kids completely away from you. Failure is an option. And I'll say it this way, uh, it, from, from following God... Uh, in your marriage, in your family, in your church, in your business, failure is not an option. For you getting closer to God, failure is not an option. You, you're right. Failure is not an option. Uh, it is a requirement. Did y'all get that? Y'all kind of quiet. I was, I'm preaching about 95%. Y'all listening about 40. Y'all yeah. with me? Come on. There you go. Failure is a requirement for you to grow. You, you go back to verse 3, it says, For you know that the testing of your faith produces that strength, that, in, that endurance, that steadfastness. So if you're going to grow this year, don't be afraid to fail. As a matter of fact, failing is a good thing. Count it joy. When you fall into various problems and you fail and you're tested and you don't always pass. If you want to be a great husband, you need to be, ma'am, willing to let your husband fail. Ooh, boys, don't stay still. I just said something real profound. I'm going to make it sure. Doggone, I got my hat on. <laughs> I'm going to be profound the rest of the time. You ready? Ma'am, you've got to be willing to let him fail. Sir? If, uh, if you want to see your kids grow, you got to be willing to let them fail. They got to strike out every once in a while to get better. Y'all with me? It's a big deal. It's a big deal. If, you're gonna, if our church is going to grow, we got to be willing to fail. You got to be willing to have a pastor that you'll let fail. I put mine on one foot at a time, too. The only difference in you and me is I got handmade. It's <laughs> <was> a gift. <laughs> the only difference in you and me is my calling in the body of Christ. You understand? We've got to be willing to fail. If we're going to go to the next level as a church, in your business, in your family, with your children, you've got to be willing to fail. If, you're going to, if our church is going to grow, we've got to be willing to fail. If, if you're going to make uh, more money in your business, you're going to have to be willing to fail. You're going to have to be tested. You're going to have to go through the tests. The fastest way to get through high school, I don't know if y'all are dumb as I am, is to fail. English in the 8th grade. I failed English in the 8th grade. I had to go to summer school in the 8th grade. You know how embarrassing it is to go to summer school when I'm supposed to be out there working? I had to go to summer school because I failed English. I almost failed English again in about the 10th grade. And my, my grade was in the last semester exam was a 58 in the 10th grade high school, okay? I almost failed. I'm telling you, I went to the principal. I went to, the <laughs> I went to my teacher. My mama didn't tell me. My dad didn't tell me to go figure this out. I did not want to go to summer school again. <laughs> Quickest way to get out of high school, guys, is to fail a, a class and have to take it over. Quickest way for you, I can't tell you how many courses that I failed going through college. 
I worked hard for this sucker. I am not smart like you are. I had, but I, I didn't quit. And I had to pay. I didn't have a college scholarship. wasn't follow, follow, But the quickest way for me to get a degree is to pay for my own classes. <laughs> my parents helped me, and I had to get some loans and stuff like that. But a lot of times I was shifting that money, and I was working full-time going to college part-time. And when you failed a cat class or you had to drop out of it before you got through, you had to pay for that sucker and take it all over again. Genetics. I passed it on the third time. That's expensive. <laughs> the quickest way to get better is you to fail. The worst thing that could happen in your life as a husband and as a wife and your children and you teenagers up there that you just kind of sneak around and you halfway get through life and you don't fail. And it's worse for you if you fail in your marriage, if you fail in your walk with Christ and sin, you'll maybe have a better chance of getting some help and maybe you'll come and let me be your pastor. The best thing that could happen in your marriage is for your marriage to fail and you to come let me be your pastor. You go get a counselor. You go get, read, read a book. Come to our small group. First advertisement for small groups, ladies and gentlemen. I got three of them going, but this one is for marriage. It's okay. Friday nights. It's going to start first Friday night in February. We're going to take the first 20 couples to get in it. Okay. At mine and Robin's house. It's called... The sanctity of marriage. Video, talk about it. Me and Rob are going to invest in 20 couples. My house, you got to bring some food. You're going to be in it now. Come on. No food, no glass. <laughs> but there's a lot of other ones too. We get too many couples, I'll get somebody else. We'll do it twice, okay? I'm not going to leave anybody out. Listen. There's some tests. The quickest way to grow is for you to fail, not succeed. You'll learn a whole lot quicker. You won't keep doing it the way you've been doing it if you fail. But if you're halfway getting by, you'll keep being sorry at what you're doing, sir. You'll keep being sorry at serving God. You'll keep being sorry in your finances. You'll keep being sorry in your tithing. you keep being sorry in serving God and managing your time. you just be sorry. I don't think Satan sometimes wants us to fail too bad because then we might want to do something about it. God said, count it all joy. Are y'all hearing me? Count it joy when you fall into various trials and temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, strength, endurance. It's going to help you be something. It's going to help you go to the next level. So, again, a willingness to fail. You've got to be willing to, to make mistakes. <laughs> y'all listen to me for just a minute. I'm going to preach. Is that all right? Can I preach? I've been teaching. I'm going to preach right now. Okay, Listen. Listen to me. If you make mistakes, you'll make changes to go to the next level. And I'm, I'm, and if you're afraid to make a mistake, if you're afraid to fail, chances are in your Christian walk, you're playing it way too safe as a man, as a woman. If you're going to fail, quit messing around with it. Why don't you jump off in these resolutions this year and do something? Why don't you be aggressive and say, I ain't going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to lose 40 pounds. Why don't you, do, why don't you say, I'm not going to join a, a small group. I'm going to lead one of them suckers. Why don't you jump out there and say, I'm not just going to go to the growth tank. I'm going to find my calling. I'm going to serve him with a full wholehearted. I'm not just going to create time. I'm not just going to make money. I'm going to make a lot of money. And I'm, I'm going to, why don't you, if you're going to fail, why don't you quit sitting on your butt way back in the back of your life and jump out front and do something for God. And if you're going to fail, fail aggressively. Jump in the game for Jesus Christ and be the daddy, be the mama that God's called you to be. And don't sit back. If you're going to fail, son, let's fail. Let's fail. Let's get out in front. And if you're going to mess up, mess up for God and mess up hard. Can I get an amen off in here? Be aggressive. Fail hard. You've got to be willing to fail. If you're going to be invaded, you're going to go to the next level for the Lord. You're going to fail at temptations. Maybe the best thing that could happen to you is you fail this year and fall into temptations. You go get in a small group and you go to James 5, 16. It says, man, I done messed up. I did this and this and this. What in the world? Can y'all help me? Confess your faults to one another. Pray for one another that you be healed. Affect your favor. Don't hide your sin back there in the back. Jump out in front and say, I got problems. Be aggressive. 
you'll have a breakout year for Jesus Christ. If you be aggressive, you be innovative. So we need a problem to solve. We need limited resource, can't fix it. Money ain't going to fix it. We need a willingness to fail. Crazy idea, number four. Crazy. I ain't talking about stupid, hair-brained stuff, people. I'm talking about you got to be aggressive and make a deal, uh, 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 come an idea, a crazy idea that if it works, it could radically change. It could be a game changer. You're losing the game, whoo, big pass in the end zone, whoo, win the game. It could be a game changer if it works. It could make such a big difference. It's crazy. It's a crazy idea, but the value is in a crazy idea that will bring, if it works, could bring an incredible difference in your marriage. What if your wife quits her job so that you can get rid of that brand new car payment that's $850 a month and go spend something else that gets you around just safe, but it ain't $850 a month. What if you quit paying $2,400 a month for child care? What if you quit having to buy all them fancy clothes and all that extra going out to eat and all that lunch and all that travel and you ain't got no time anywhere? Why? What if, because you got working the night shift, she's working the day shift, y'all ain't got no relationship, you're about close to divorce and, and this thing's going on, you ain't seen your kids because you're on this, this, this deal. And what if she quits her job and saves you about $5,000 a month or $4,000 a month and she ain't making but $3,000. Okay? What if you do something aggressive and it saves your marriage? That's a crazy idea. What if you could make some business decisions that would get you out of debt if it worked? What if you make some choices that could get this church out of debt? What if you make some choices in your family that if your crazy idea would work, we could reach more people for Jesus Christ in 2019 than any than all the other 14 years that Circle J's been in existence here in this year? If we got a crazy idea that could reach that many lost people for Jesus Christ, if it would work, and we got to be willing to fail. Y'all with me here? We gotta have a crazy idea. Quit standing back. Be aggressive. Quit patty cake, patty cake. Be aggressive. Come up with some crazy ideas. Follow that crazy trail. What God leads you to do. It's crazy because you ain't never done it before. It's crazy because nobody else is doing it. Okay. So here's all you need to follow a crazy idea. You got to have wisdom to recognize it, to see it, not write it off. Oh, we can't do that. No cop out. You got to have wisdom to recognize it and the courage to attempt it. You see that? You got to have the wisdom to recognize it and the courage to attempt it. James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives it generously to all without reproach, and it'll be given to him. If anyone lacks wisdom, what wisdom means, what wisdom is, is it helps you see what you can't see. Wisdom helps you make sense out of what does not make sense in your life, in your family, in your finances. You got to have the wisdom to see that crazy idea that if it would work, it could radically change your money. It could radically change your relationship with your spouse. It could radically change your relationship with your children. It could radically change this church. It could radically change the number of people that come to know God this year for the Lord. You know, maybe things are stink in your life. Maybe things are getting stale in your relationship with your kids or you're single and there's people hanging around you that ain't no good for you. And that's hard to be single nowadays and honor God with your life and with your body and all these people. You need some help and things are starting to slide the wrong direction. What do you need to do this year? What do you need to do this? You need to have a problem. You can't have the resources to fix it. you got to be able to develop the ability to try some new things, to be willing to fail, and you got to make some decisions, to, whether it's getting out of debt or whatever it may, and make some crazy ideas, sell some stuff, do some aggressive things. If we're going to reach more people in, at Circle J this year than we ever have, we're going to have to do some crazy ideas. How about, how about crazy ideas? We flop the deal. 
87% of the church nationwide does not know their spiritual gifts. How about at Circle J Cowboy Church that we flopped that and there's only 13%. Did I do my math right, ladies and gentlemen? 13% that don't know their spiritual gifts. And at Circle J Cowboy Church this year, we got 87% of our church memberships know what their calling is and what their spiritual gifts. Let's swap that thing. How about we start something crazy? We got a camera rolling back there and we're putting out this media. How about we stop just putting out little messages and we start a media church? How about we pe- help cowboys in Wyoming that can't get to a church? How about we, we uh, help people in California and Florida and Canada or in Europe come together in a small group in a video? Well, all other people can do stuff like can't keep why can't we start an online church that literally draws people together from all over the world where they don't have a church like we and we can share a church and where they can build relationships with each other they can do it on social media why can't we start a real online church that reaches people from all over the world and they can do whatever we got to do to help people know God. They can go through the growth track with us online and video and discover their purpose and they can make a difference and they can be in small groups with us, video or on video with others and we can start small groups all over the world. What if that's a way that we could reach thousands of people this year for Jesus Christ? A crazy idea. What if it worked? What crazy ideas do you have in your family? What if it worked? For this church, I don't want you to walk into this year. I want you to bow up and run into this year. Amen? Amen. Run hard. Don't pick around the corner. Bust out in the middle with some crazy ideas for your family, for God. It would be amazing. I want to ask you some questions. I encourage you to write these down or you can go back and listen to this. Some things to consider. As you leave here today, number one, first question is, what problems do you have that if you solved it could be a game changer for you, yourself, and your personal life, and your family, or this church? What problems do you have that if you solved it, if you were innovative enough to God to give you the wisdom, the courage to do it, that you it'd be a game changer for you, your family, or your church? The second thing I want you to do is I want you to write down every excuse you have. I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the ability. I can't can't tie. I don't have the finances. I don't have the... I want you to write down every excuse that you have. Don't have enough time. Don't have the right people to help me figure that out. Don't, Don't know how to do it. Write down every excuse that you have. And then ask yourself this next question. How can that seen limitations, all those limitations that you wrote down, be used for innovation this year in my life? How can all of the reasons, my limitations, be used for innovation this year? Another question is what crazy idea do you have? What crazy idea do you have? That if it could work, it could radically change, be a game changer. In the back of your mind, what crazy idea you have. And the last question I want to ask is this. Y'all ready? What are you going to do about it? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Lord Jesus, we come to you. <laughs> we're going to run into this year. <laughs> I've had Satan trying to sit me down, slow me down, stop me, back me up, send me backwards. I commit to you. <laughs> I'm all in. I may not be the best player on the field, but I'm jumping in the game, and I'm running hard. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you help us to be innovative. We all have problems. We all have situations. We don't have the resources to fix them. Lord, give us the ability, the willingness to fail, trying to be better for you. Lord Jesus, I pray. I pray that you give us the ability the wisdom, the courage to run 
with crazy ideas that if they change, if it works, radically change our personal walk with you, radically change us personally and our families and this church and this ministry. Here's your radical step, sir. You've been saying no to Jesus. Ma'am, teenager, you sitting down, you're watching your parents, you ain't come to Christ, you're on your way to hell, you spend more time on your games and Facebook and social media, and it's all these friends and all this stuff you're talking about, and if you were to die right now, all that wouldn't matter, you'd go right straight to hell. Here's a radical step for you, sir, young person, jump out, be aggressive, and say, I'm following Jesus. I ain't talking about being a sissy. I'm talking about being a man. Sissies stand back. They listen. They, they're, they're, they, they, don't, they don't get in a fight. You want to fight? Step up there with Jesus, and he'll use you to make a difference. Ma'am, you know that you're not where you need to be. You know you're not allowing God to move in your marriage. You've been trying to manage it yourself. How about you being aggressive? Right now, he said, Jesus, I'm going to trust you with him. I'm going to be willing to let him fail. I'm going to trust you with him. I'm going to make aggressive changes in my life to help him be everything he needs to be. I don't know what your prayer is, but if you need to pray with, to receive Jesus right now, pray with me and just say, Jesus, I say yes. You gave your life for me. I now give my life to you. Forgive me of my sin. Give me a new start. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you, I receive it. You're here and you've been sitting back and you're playing it safe. You're afraid to fail and you're you're judgmental on anybody around you that's failing. Why don't you make a commitment to God? I'm going to work so I'm going to be aggressive for you. I'm willing to fail trying to get better and serve you and do more for you. And I'm willing to let other people fail too around me because it's good to have a problem we can't fix Lord help me to do that Lord Jesus as a church I don't want to play it safe I don't want to go into this year the way we went into last year and the year before and the year before I pray in the name of Jesus for financial freedom I pray in the name of Jesus you show us a way to get completely out of debt. I pray that you release that money going to bank to reach more souls for Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus, big change, big radical change, that we be an aggressive church, that we reach more people this year than we ever have. Lord, give us a crazy idea that we'll reach more people. We'll baptize more people this year than we ever have in the history of the church. Lord, give us the wisdom to see all how we can reach all these lost people in this region. Give us the wisdom to see how we can get out of debt. Give us the wisdom to see how we can reverse the fact that only 13% of our people don't know their calling instead of 87%. Give us the wisdom to see what we can't see, what doesn't make sense. Give us courage that comes from heaven. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.